What's up, everybody? Welcome to GIS Chops. My name's Jeff. It's Tuesday, so that means another Tool Belt Tuesday tool in ArcGIS Pro. This week, we're going to be talking about the Dynamic Constraints tool or option in ArcGIS Pro. That tool allows you to constrain your sketch to certain angles or distances. Now let's go get to constraining. To use the dynamic constraints on your features, you're going to need to turn it on. And you do that by coming down here to the bottom row, hovering over that button, and clicking it. Now my dynamic constraints are turned on, I'm going to create a line feature. You see there's visual feedback as to what the angle is of my sketch and the distance. If I turn it off, I don't get that. Now I turn it on and there it is. And to enter a specific angle or direction, you hit tab and then enter a bearing. So 72 degrees, 31 minutes, 4 seconds in the northeast quadrant. And then you can see it's restrained or constrained to that, that direction. And now my distance entry box is highlighted waiting for a distance to be entered. So I'll do 351.5 feet. Now I can click and start digitizing or keep entering directions and distances. And notice that little N with an arrow by it on the left. That means my ground to grid correction is on and you can tell it's on by the blue highlighted correction button up there. If I turn it off, that goes away in the, in the entry boxes. And you can change which parameter gets entered first. If you hover over the constraints button, you can see default constraint for input mode. I have it set to direction, which is the angle. If we change it to distance, now when I hit tab, the distance entry is highlighted, 451 feet. And you can see it's constrained to that distance from where I was and I want it to be 10 degrees in the northwest quadrant. So that's how you turn it on. That's how you change the settings. The other setting in there is default direction constraint. I have mine set to absolute. If we change it to deflection, that means it uses the previous line as a reference, and then the angle you enter is a deflection off of that line. So I want it to go 45 degrees off of what it was. So there's 45. Positive angle values are to the right and negative angle values are to the left. If I hit escape, that cancels it. Now I go tab. And if I go negative 45, now it's going to go to the left. So that's how deflection and absolute are different. Most of the stuff I do are legal descriptions which use quadrant bearings. So I leave it as absolute. And you can change how you enter direction units by going to the project, backstage, options, units, and then direction units. I have mine set to quadrant bearing. You can set it to polar, south azimuth, or north azimuth. So that's where you can change your direction units. I'm leaving mine at quadrant bearing. If I have a Kogo enabled line feature class that has Kogo fields, the constraint entries will add the bearing and the distance to your Kogo fields. I'm going to show you how I do that. I have this line feature class called Kogo Lines. I just created it. I need to go to the geoprocessing pane and search for enable Kogo. Then I'm going to pick my Kogo Lines feature class and run it. But now we open up the attribute table and it has all these direction, distance, radius, arc length, and radius two fields that are the Kogo fields. Now that we have our line feature class Kogo enabled, we can start adding lines using the two point line tool. That's going to populate the fields the enable Kogo geoprocessing tool created. So I'll be click on my beginning point, hit tab, 
and this is the subdivision boundary so that's how you enter a two-point line and you can see it got labeled with its bearing and distance my next bearing is 89.2054-2 that format for entering a bearing is the most efficient way to do it because you can enter it on the keypad instead of typing in north then a number then a dash then a number then a dash then e when you use the quadrant of one that's northeast two is southeast three is southwest and four is northwest I can enter legal descriptions very quickly just staying on the keypad and using the traverse tool and I'll cover the traverse tool in a future video I don't recommend using the constraints to enter a legal description it's too difficult to hit the tab I always forget to hit the tab key to start entering a bearing so I end up just zooming out or zooming in or zooming out when I hit the minus button see if I hit numbers and then minus it zooms out so that that tells me that I forgot to hit tab I'm gonna upload a video of me just doing this whole subdivision boundary using the constraints tools and then using the traverse tool and you can see which one is better and how much easier it is with the traverse tool so be looking for that video be sure to hit that bell so you get notified of any new content that's all I have for the constraints tools let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell like this video if it helped you out if you want to see my other tool belt Tuesday videos they're over here my latest videos up there and my subscribe buttons up there we'll see you next time and be kind out there